Hi, Chris Murray here. I got into a discussion on Twitter the other day with a follower of mine about the proper use of cut, and I thought it was an important topic to actually cover here because I think some people may not realize some of the nuances about the cut tool and how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and use a, a project that I've been working at, picking at for a while here, and I'm going to just zoom in and we're going to talk about what cut does. So first of all, we want to make sure that our object is selected and it is an editable poly and I'm going to go ahead and just open up our graphite modeling tools over here and uh, you can see we have our modeling tab here and cut is located here on the graphite modeling tools or it's located here in the uh, right click quad menu so I'm going to use the same tool I'm going to use the one right here in the right click quad menu and it really doesn't matter whether you want to use snaps or not for this. That was part of the discussion on Twitter is, you know, do I want to use vertex or edge or whatever? It really doesn't matter because all the feedback that you need to know about the cut tool actually occurs on the tool. So what the tool is for is for actually cutting geometry, adding slices, doing custom modeling, that sort of thing directly on the surface without actually having to do like a polygon inset or extrude or bevel or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my cut tool. And uh, you'll notice that the tool has several different modes of operation depending on what type of geometry that I'm rolling uh, the mouse on top of. So for example, if the mouse is currently uh, on top of a polygon, the icon, the cursor icon, takes on more of a square appearance. If I slide it over an edge, it takes on a linear appearance or that of an edge. And if I roll over a vertex, it takes on a very small uh, almost crosshair type shape and this is how you can tell what attribute or what aspect of the geometry that you're actually going to be cutting when you cut. Now the purpose of the whole conversation on Twitter was that it, the person was using the cut tool and they was leaving behind extra vertices that they then had to go in and manually weld together and that really shouldn't happen if you're using cut uh, with this method. So for example if I just want to go ahead and start clicking anywhere I could just start clicking geometry and, uh, or excuse me, clicking shapes, and all of a sudden I've cut a new set of polygons directly into the side here. Let me exit the cut tool, and I'll select these, and I can see that I've got some new geometry there. Now that's very random in terms of how I created it. I'll go back to the cut tool. And now when I click on the cut tool, I know for certain that I'm adding vertices on top of edges, not in the middle of polygons, uh, like if I were to just click anywhere. So I'll right click and end that process. I'm still in polygon mode. And so I've uh, got those cuts there. And then finally, when we're cutting using uh, the cutting on vertices, if we want to line up cuts on vertices, we just click from one vertex to the other. And I know for sure that this new edge that I've cut has gone from one vertex to the other. There are no other vertices there as long as I've cut it in the right spot. So I'll go into vertex mode. I'll just do a quick marquee selection. And you can see that indeed there's one vertex selected there and indeed there's one vertex selected there. So there really is, uh, it's very clear about how uh, the cut tool is going to work before you actually uh, click on the mouse and cut it. The other thing about the cut tool that's kind of interesting that a lot of people may not realize is, let me go ahead and get out of this, is I can, I don't, I can span multiple edges with one single cut and it'll automatically insert all the required cuts along that um, span. So I'm going to turn the cut tool back on and I'm just going to go ahead and click on this edge and drag all the way down to this edge and notice that it's already cut along uh, all of the uh, edges that it's crossed over including maintaining the topology there. So the cut tool is actually quite powerful if you're adding in geometry after the fact. It's just important to realize the, what these little uh, cursor changes mean and that'll help you maintain proper cuts without adding in a lot of extra vertices that you then have to go in and clean up later. Anyways, I hope this helps. Again, my name is Chris Murray, and thanks a lot for watching.